Are the Bitcoin miners in trouble and will the Mt. Gox Bitcoin dump also be a dump for the price? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, again, five amazing Bitcoin charts, a crypto tip, talking about the news, of course, answering the question of one of the followers, and yes, at the end, an inspirational quote, and the inspirational quote today has to do with born to be free. So let's quickly jump now into the news and then after that into the charts to see how that news NTA is influencing the Bitcoin price. Bam. The news for today is about the Bitcoin miners. Are they in trouble? Are they in survival mode? Why? Because the Bitcoin hash price fell with almost 52% to 0.0459 cents per tera hash second. So that's a huge drop from 0.09 cents per tera hash second. That's 52% drop. Why is this happening? First of all, because of the Bitcoin price. The Bitcoin price dropped with almost 8%. So yes, there is a less revenue they are making, of course, because of the drop of that Bitcoin price. Second of all, the halving just happened. We just had a halving. We earned 6.25 Bitcoins per block. Now the miners are only earning 3.125 bitcoins per block so less bitcoins are being mined each block less revenue the bitcoin price is dropping also less revenue then the network difficulty also dropped with almost five percent to 83.6 trillion hashes and aside of that the bitcoin miner reserve plummeted to 1.9 million bitcoins which is the lowest of the last 14 years in bitcoin so it's a combination of multiple factors that are making it a very hard time for miners to survive. They are still mining in profit, but the Bitcoin price must not fall deeper because then the miners won't be mining in profit anymore. So 60K for me, a huge area of support. And I think the miners need that price as well. So that was the first news of the day. The miners are in survival mode, but they are still making profit. But we are seeing all time lows when it comes to Terra hashes, when it comes to miner reserves, when it comes to the mining difficulty, etc. Guys, so be aware of those news items when you are an investor in Bitcoin. The second news is, of course, about Mt. Gox announcing that they will start to distribute the Bitcoins in July already. We are talking about $9.4 billion worth of Bitcoin that will be distributed to 127,000 people. So that's a lot of Bitcoin, but also a lot of people, guys. Now, the question is, is this distribution of those bitcoins that those peoples have been waiting for now already for 10 years because the Mt. Gox crash was in 2014 is that going to lead to a dump onto the market i believe the price is already calculated in this dump that we just saw that is all out of the fear because of the Mt. Gox bitcoins coming onto the market from july so that's like fear of the people that are like, ah, oh, maybe that will dump the price, let's sell now. So we already saw a huge crash because only of the news. I don't think that the real event of distribution of those Bitcoins will lead to a bigger crash. Why don't I believe this? Because first of all, those people were in Bitcoin in 2014. That is when the Mt. Gox exchange collapsed. These are early adopters. They understand exactly what Bitcoin is because that's why they start to buy in Bitcoin in 2014. In those moments, most of us didn't even know what Bitcoin was. That was when they were buying Bitcoin. They were truly early believers. Now, in those 10 years of waiting, they have educated themselves. I do think they became even more believers in Bitcoin because they now really understood, wow, this is not going to disappear anymore. It's fully integrated now. It's even having spot ETS. It's on the CME exchange. It's everywhere now in our life. So Bitcoin is not going to go away. I have been waiting for 10 years. I can wait another year or two years before we see a bull market top. Maybe I want to hold off forever. Maybe I consider them already as lost and I don't want to sell them anymore. Maybe that is where my real pension fund, if it made already so much return on investment now, it will make a little bit more. And of course, a lot of those people will take some profits. Some people might need a new car or they might need to fix the roof of their house or whatever it is. There is always people taking profit, but not 100%. And 100% is even impossible because a huge amount of these Bitcoins don't even belong to retail investors, but to companies. A few big 
big companies own 10,000 Bitcoins here, 10,000 Bitcoins there. So maybe it's only like 65,000 Bitcoins that really will hit the market. But still, guys, these people have been waiting for 10 years. During those 10 years, they have been offered bailouts many times. A lot of companies told them, hey, we will buy your Bitcoins. Here, you get US dollars now. With a discount, we will buy them. You don't need to wait anymore. They said no to all of those offers because they understood what Bitcoin was. And because they were refusing all those offers, do you really think now they are going to dump their Bitcoins the moment they receive them? No. Nah. I think that dump is already calculated in because of that huge retrace that we saw from 74 now to even 58,000 US dollar. And I don't think those people will sell, but I think they will be even bigger holders than they already were because they had 10 years to educate themselves on Bitcoin and saw Bitcoin growing into something internationally accepted. They will not be selling, in my opinion. They will be even supporting it because probably they bought a shitload of more Bitcoins after that Mt. Gox because they understood, hey, we still believe in Bitcoin. Mt. Gox, maybe we will get at that later, but we need to accumulate more Bitcoins because we still believe a futuristic decentralized peer-to-peer -peer cash that can also be considered as the gold of the 21st century. So for me, that Mt. Gox dump, not going to happen, is already calculated in. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. We can see that huge crash yesterday all the way till a low, guys, of 58,320. Let that be a beautiful support level over there, guys. And we are bouncing back now. We are around 61K already. So it could be a 3K profit if you uh, did take a trade yesterday. Uh, like we also said, in the VIP group, you can take this trade because there is a lot of support around these levels. And, you know, I don't believe in crashing to 52K, which, of course, is the next level of support. But short term, again, a beautiful trade setup. At this time, it was a beautiful short sell over there. Candle closing down below the yellow stepping line. The blue line crossing the white line. You see the white line curling down. A lot of blue and uh, yellow in the screen and red line is on top like massively. That was a beautiful short and you could have taken profit somewhere around these huge wicks over there, guys. When you see the blue line crossing again, the red line, that was time to take some profits. Now, let's look at something way more important at the day chart. This day chart is going to take some time now, guys, because what I want to show you. We almost fell exactly to the 200 day moving average. That 200 day moving average is at the moment around 57,563. We fell down to 58,000. So we almost fell to the 200 day moving average, which if you look in history is a huge area of support. This line during a bull market is a massive area of support. What I want to do now is I want to point you to the bottom of this chart now here to the RSI that RSI is really bottoming out. It's really low, guys. We are now currently at a level of 20. We are going to take a look now how often have we been in that level of 20 area with the RSI on a daily chart. So I need to zoom out a little bit. You can see these green lines. These are the ultimate levels of support. Of course, 52K and 43K. Of course, there's support in between, but these are my ultimate levels at the moment. 52K, if we would break the 200-day moving average, then 52K could be in play. But guys, the 200-day, we will show you in a minute, is always a huge area of support when we are in the midst of a bull market. But now I'm going to zoom out because I just told you the RSI is at the low level of 20. How often have we been around that level now in the last couple of years so we are talking about since 2016 here on the bottom left this 2016 that is before the bull market of 2017 that is the first time i'm going to look at this of course before that we went down below it as well but i'm not going to make this a too long stretch so this is the 2017 bull market this is the 2021 bull market now we are on the 2024 five bull market 2017 top plus four years is 2020 plus four years is 2025 that's where the top will be now we are at the level of 20 last time that we were there was here it is when we were at a bitcoin price of 26,000 US dollar and we went on a massive run to 70,000 US dollar the time before that we were in the bear market we were here at a level of 17,000 and when we with down below to these levels we pumped up all the way to 24,000 US dollar the time before that we were here we were exactly in that crash in the bull market but from 30k we went again to 70k the time before that there was the COVID crash over there 
we crashed all the way to 3.5k, 4k, we went back to 9k, doubled almost. The times before that was these two over there. We were at that crash after we went from 3000 to 4000, we came down below to these levels again of 6000 before running up against to 10,000, also at these levels. Then we were here, bear market bottom in 2018, December, we were at 3,000 US dollar. After that, we went to 14,000 US dollar. Here, also at that level, that was when we were already in the bear market, even in the bear market, we were able to pump from 6,000 to 9,000 US dollar. The time before was over there. We crashed all the way in this bull market of 2017 to 2,000 US dollar before pumping up again all the way to 5,000 US dollar. The time before that over there, guys, we were crashing from $700 back all the way here to $400 before we went on a run all the way to $1,000. So every and each moment that we came into these RSI levels of 20 and lower, a massive run after that happened. And if we talk now about 2016 till now, my face was partly in the chart, sorry for that. But 2016 till now, you now you can see the circles also on the left bottom. That means that we're talking about almost eight years. And in those eight years, how many times did the RSI dip to these levels? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. Only 11 times in those 8 years we dipped to the level of 20 or below it. And every and each time the Bitcoin price followed up with a massive run. Every time. I could be drawing boxes on every and each time that that happened, guys, but I just don't have the time for that. But for example, over here, after that box, what happened? Over here, after that box, did he click, click, click? <laughs> what happened? Over here, guys. After this box, what happened? The price went up every time when i draw these boxes because of the level of 20 on the rsi you can see that after that box we go up in price guys every time i can keep doing these boxes but you get the picture i hope and if you now look at the latest time over there this is here guys this box look after that what happened that is when the rsi was low we went up massively and now again we can see again RSI at a very low level here at this box. I think we're finding support at that 200 day moving average, a little bit higher even, and we're gonna see a huge reversal of the market that will bring Bitcoin back to 70K, maybe even 80K this time, guys. But again, it's summertime. During the summer, it's mostly boring. In those boring times, there's a lot of sideways movements, but there will be reversal, even if it's just a 67K or 66K, we will be reversing this market because can go a little bit lower and we are now minus 20 we can even take it to the lowest point over there that's like five that is this moment over there the bear market during the bear markets we are always at the lowest and eh? we are at five levels aside of the bear market there's not many moments that we go to these five levels mostly it's around the 20 levels and we are at 20 level so do you decide now what to do should you be selling or should you be buying and if we zoom out more we get into this uh, monthly chart guys and yes this monthly chart i already shared with you a couple of years ago and i told you we will probably always follow these kinds of four year cycles you know 17 months after the halving there was the top in 2017 70 months after the halving there was the top in 2021 70 months after the halving there will probably be the top in 2025 also all the other numbers bottom to the next stop check them they are always in line or the bottom to the halving always in line or the bottom to the new all-time high almost always in line just check the chart pause the video and analyze the chart for yourself i predict that the next stop will be august september 2025 macd is still doing fine it's becoming a little bit uh, less dark greenish we can see of course also this line over here the purple could be crossing that yellow line which is not a very good sign because that is mostly that we had the bull market top so let's see if that purple line can still cross up just like it did over here in 2017 look we thought we were crossing it but then we gave up again then we thought we were crossing that yellow line we gave up again that is how the 2017 bull market went and probably how this purple line will now also revert to the top again i believe it's an amazing chart that's why i created it but um, pause the video and check all these numbers for yourself guys now let's jump into another amazing chart and that is this chart guys 
this chart is a very important chart. This is the Bitcoin price after the halvings. This is the 2012, the light blue is the 2020, the green is the 2016, the black is now 2024. This is the halving moment over there. From that halving moment, it takes 50 days, which is almost two months, of sideways movements. Even if you really look into the charts, 100 days or even say 150 days of boring movements inside a range. After 150 days, we make these moves, blue and green. The purple line is different, but that was the first bull market in 2012, so that's a little bit steeper, but even that one moved sideways after halving for 40 days, 40 days before we took off. Green and the blue line, around 150 days. Yes, sometimes we went up after the halving, sometimes we dipped after the halving. In average, we went sideways in a certain range, whatever range it might be, for now 60 to 70, for example, whatever range. But after those 150 days, we saw a massive run in Bitcoin, easily doubling in prices. And that's what you see on this chart as well. If you are like counting 57 days after the halving or 60 days, whatever it is after the halving, we are now not at 66, it's all the numbers, we are now at 60,000 US dollar. In 2012, we should have been around $80,000, that's a positive first bull market. In 2016, we should have been around 59,000 US dollar, which we are, kind of the same as the 2016 bull market. In 2020, we should have been around 70,000 US dollar now, if we would have followed those paths. We are at 60K right now, 61K. We are exactly where we need to be in this part of the bull market. This is a boring part, mostly the summer part, mostly the part that will take 150 days, which is five months before we will take off again. Make sure you accumulate a shitload of Bitcoins in those five months. These might be the most important five months of your life that you can still buy Bitcoins at 60, 70K levels before we make a jump to 120 to 140K levels. Beautiful investment opportunity. When the blood is on the streets, you buy. Stop crying, start buying. The crypto tip for today is a short one. Weak hands are always losing. If you're a trader or an investor, weak hands always lose. You first of all need to decide if you are a trader, you wanna trade the charts daily, by having the time to trade it daily, not like a second job, like an eight hour shift and then in between the pauses trading, that is not being a trader. You will not succeed. You will lose all of your capital. Or are you an investor? Are you investing in Bitcoin because you believe in it in the long term? There's a huge difference between those two. Trader, daily activities in trading, selling and buying. Investor, you buy now and then or your dollar cost average into Bitcoin for the long term because you believe it will go up. Now. If you are a trader, you should be freaking out about the short-term volatility and you should be having the time to trade that volatility because that is where you make your profit. If you're an investor, you must never worry about that short-term volatility. You must just add Bitcoins in every dip because you believe in the long-term. An investor is a long-term perspective. What will this asset bring me in the long-term? Short-term, that's a trader. Make up your mind. Which one will you be? Do you have full time availability to be a trader? I say be a trader. If you don't have that time, a couple of hours per day, don't be that trader, be an investor. And then also treat your Bitcoins as an investor and also mindset as an investor. So you're not freaking out about every short term move. You're zooming out and you're looking at that bigger picture that is just part of the whole bull market that we're going to see. And that top will be in 2025, so I don't need to consider all these short-term volatile moves. Only if you have capital aside to still dollar cost average into Bitcoin. So that's a huge difference. And why did I start with weak hands? Because if you have weak hands while trading, you will be selling to your position always too early. You're like, ah, this is going wrong, sell. And then bam, the position would have gone in profit. Weak hands is not a strategy. If you're an investor and you're buying Bitcoin for the long term, but then Bitcoin crashes with 5% and you're selling in loss, you have weak hands. You're not capable of being an investor. Weak hands is not something you should have in this Bitcoin industry. If you have weak hands, like weak hands, don't step into Bitcoin. Stay out of it. Just keep to your fiat currency, like dollars or euros or maybe stocks or bonds, something that is less volatile and that will make you poor. Weak hands stay poor.
strong hands become rich. That's the difference. Now, that was the crypto tip for today. Then answering the question of one of the followers, this question came from down under in Australia. The question was, Didi, when will we be able to see the All in the Bitcoin Family uh, series in Australia? Now, to be completely honest and open and transparent, we sold our rights for the series to the Benelux, which is the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg, to Amazon Prime. They were allowed to stream it in those two, three countries. They also said we are going to stream it internationally after that. Now, the launch in the Netherlands was really successful. There was a lot of views, a lot of, still a lot of people are watching it daily. It was positive numbers all over. Because it's summer, Amazon Prime is like that. Maybe we should launch later, or maybe, you know, we should country for country. We need to negotiate on the contract for the international launch, blah, blah, blah. So these huge companies are centralized and they have a lot of power in this industry. So it's Amazon and Netflix that are the biggest players. We can still choose as a family which platform we will use to launch internationally because we didn't sell the rise to the series yet internationally. They are still owned by June, the series maker, uh, and of course our family. So now we need to decide what we want to do. And lately I've been thinking a lot about this because streaming our series on Amazon Prime or for example Netflix would require people to pay a subscription every month to be able to see our series. And as a decentralized Bitcoin believer that believes really in freedom, I want everyone in this world to be able to see this series. So not just when you have a subscription to Amazon or to Netflix. So lately I've been really considering thinking, shouldn't I just launch internationally on, for example, YouTube or for example, Rumble or any other decentralized streaming platform that gives access to that content for free? that also very poor people all over the world that don't have money to pay Amazon or Netflix will be able to see our series. So I'm really thinking about that. Let me know down below in the comments what do you think that we should do? Should we do again something different in the life than normal people do? Like normal families would choose Amazon and they would choose probably Netflix just because they earn a little bit of money over there. And just of course, because they are huge brands. Or should we again do something completely different in this world? Should we launch a series internationally on an open streaming platform that is accessible for everyone and not earn anything ourselves aside of the YouTube revenue, but that's not that much, and just go for the fact that people can all over the world see that series? Because I do believe that all people all over the world should see this series because they should see what we as the Bitcoin family stand for. And that is Bitcoin and the true meaning of Bitcoin not in the Lamborghini meaning, not in all the wealth meaning, a completely different view about Bitcoin. And I think everyone in the world should be able to see that series. So let me know down below, would you stream this one, for example, on YouTube or Rumble, or do you have any other platform that you would stream it? Let me know. We would really appreciate your feedback as a family, uh, what you think about this situation, because we really are making up our mind, what will we do now internationally? Will we just push it out for free and then season two, three, four, also just for free on one of these free streaming platforms? Or will we do another deal with one of these huge centralized entities like Netflix or Amazon? Let me know down below. Which also brings me to the last part of the video, guys. And that last part is, of course, an inspirational quote. The quote for the day I already said like a year or something ago, but I need to repeat some of them because there's not like that many quotes. But the quote is, the bad news, guys, the bad news is that time flies. The good news, though, is that you are the pilot. Time can be flying, but you are the pilot. You are the one that determines which direction the time flies. And you can be filling up that time, that time that flies, with a shitload of activities that don't make you happy, or you can be filling up the time with a shitload of activities that do make you happy. You are the pilot. Please understand, time is the most precious asset out there. It's more precious than fiat currency, it's more precious than gold, it's more precious than Bitcoin, guys. Yes, I am a Bitcoiner, but time is my most precious asset. I need to be the pilot of the time that is flying by. I want to determine what I do with this time. I don't want other people to determine what I do with my time. It's my time. So don't depend on your boss or your family or your friends, on them to determine what you do with your time. Because then time will fly by and at the end you will be looking back and you will be like, shit, I should have done this. I should have done that. I could have done this. I could have done that. 
you need to grab that steer handle, the pilot steer handle of that climb that's flying by. You need to grab that and you need to hold that and steer that time in the direction that you want to be flying. You have full control on your own time and your whole life. If you decide now to turn around, walk away, that's your decision and you just chose a new path in your life. If you decide now to turn right or left, you decide what you will do with that time. If you decide every morning when that clock starts ringing, ah, fuck, okay, I will go to my job again because my boss wants to, because yeah, if I don't go, he will become poor and I don't want that. I want to keep my salary and I want to make my boss richer. You know, if you decide to do that with your time, that's your choice. Be happy with it. It's not bad, but you need to learn to appreciate and to be happy that you chose to do that with your time. If it makes you really sick and really unhappy, then it becomes really time that you take that steer handle and steer in another direction so that your time is spent in a better way that makes you happy. It's very simple. It's not difficult mathematics. You are in control of everything that you do every and each day, every and each hour, every and each minute, every and each second. And those seconds and those minutes and those hours, those are the expression of time. You determine what you will do the next 10 seconds. Are you going to do the dishes? Are you going to read a book? Are you going to go to the toilet? It's all you. You are the pilot. And the moment you start to understand that you are the pilot of all that time that is flying by, you will also start to understand that you can do whatever you want in that time. And now you need to shift towards 80% of the time doing what makes you happy, and 20% of the time doing what makes you unhappy. Because believe me, you can't spend all the time only in positivity. Everyone has ups and downs. And those downs, that needs to be 20%. And those up need to be 80%, not the other way around. It must not be 80% working for a boss that makes me unhappy, 20% doing your passion, which makes you happy. Other way around, 80% passion, dreams, 20% working for a boss or whatever that doesn't make you happy. So that's the quote for today, guys. Yes, the bad news is that time is flying by, but the good news is you are the pilot. Take control of that steer handle and start to follow those dreams and do whatever it is that you love with that time. Stop wasting that time. Start to treat time as your most important asset. That asset is the only one that will be taken from you and you don't know when. You might fall dead tomorrow. You might fall dead next year. You might fall dead in 15 years. You don't know. But what you do know is that you have time till that moment. And that's the only limited time there is in the world. It's almost more limited than Bitcoin. We know that there's 21 million Bitcoins, but that can be divided in a lot of Satoshis. Time is ticking daily, and we don't know how much time we have. But that time that we have, we should be living the way we want to live. Live the life that you love, love the life that you're living. And you will reach that because of spending your time in a way that makes you happy. And lately, guys, I've been filming a little bit more on this rooftop because um, when I go down and film, I get recognized more and more. And often people just disturb me then and they start to talk to me and I just want to spend time with them. So I, I start to talk to them. But at that moment, I'm not recording my video. I'm not focused on my video and it will cost me a lot of time because then again, I need to edit the view, etc., to make sure it will be live early as possible for you guys. So I need to sometimes now uh, record upstairs here so I won't be disturbed. Of course, the view is not as beautiful. We don't have palm trees, but you have a beautiful sea view. Uh, so sorry for not being able to record the videos all the time uh, downstairs, but I also need to look at my time and also need to decide what to do with my time. I would prefer to be walking the beach, etc. But at the moment, I'm really, really busy during this bull market. So I also need to diversify my time in between all the things that I love doing every day. So that's why I'm doing it on the rooftop instead of recording down below at that beautiful spot between those palm trees. Because yes, uh, I am being stopped with filming then many times and I can't afford that time at the moment. Sorry for that, but I hope you still enjoy this amazing view. That is everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts and about everything else? Thank you. I wish you a beautiful day. See you tomorrow again. Bam.